Marooned Without Shelter. Backyard signs to the rescue. Sound you can see. And books that put up a fight. It's a mystery, but we're looking for clues. Blast off on a secret mission. And hi-ya, coin karate. How does he do that stuff? It's a mystery to me. Well, mystery's our business here on Backyard Science. And first up, it looks as though someone's got sticky fingers. But will they get away with it? Well, it's a clue, but I think to track down this culprit, she'll really have to be a super sleuth. Next up, Richard showing he's got super speed. Sunan says I can have as many of the coins as I like, but there's a catch. I can't touch the stack, and I can only take them from the bottom. No problem. Objects need a force to get them moving, otherwise they stay in the same place. It's known as inertia. Because he's only hitting the bottom coin, inertia keeps the others still. So, want to lose any more points? No, but you've got to give me a chance to win them back. Two people can use inertia. I bet all the rest I could get this paper out without knocking over the stack. You're on. Okay, one, two, three. Mr. Inertia strikes again. And I get my money back. Ah! I'm planting some new seeds. Hmm, I hope they grow. Now for some water. Oh no, the head's missing from the watering can. This will just wash my seeds away. It's no good. I'm going to have to make my own. An old drink can ought to do. I'll just make four holes around the base. Tie on something to hold it up with. I'll fill it up with water. A quick test. It's working perfectly. A nice gentle stream over my new seeds. I'll just refill. But hang on. Look at this. It's spinning. I think I must have made the holes with a slight angle. So the water coming out of the holes pushes back on the can and makes it spin. That water power can be pretty strong. A machine called a water turbine is often used to generate the electricity that powers our homes. It gets its energy from water flowing over dams. Now that is a clever watering can. Funny how you can make a discovery almost by accident. But it won't be an accident back at the crime scene if our villain is caught. I found a hair from the cookie thief. Maybe I can find a match here somewhere. Hmm, a couple of them look similar. But it's hard to see if it's a 
perfect match. So, on its own, this isn't enough to catch the thief. I need another clue. But I'm closing in. Margot's been grounded again, and she's serving time up in her bedroom. I really need to get a message to her, but if I shout, her mum's going to catch me. But I've got an idea for a rocket power delivery. Better get started. I'm going to need a balloon, some scissors, and sticky tape, a drinking straw, a piece of paper, and Margot's found some string in her room. She's tied on her end. Now I'll thread the string through the straw. I'm gonna need every bit of puff I've got to reach that window. Tricky, taping the balloon to the straw. Now it's ready for launch. Three, two, one, we have liftoff. Hey! The rocket has landed. The balloon works as a simple rocket. The air is squeezed inside the balloon at high pressure. When you let the nozzle go, it all rushes out, pushing the balloon forward. And, in this case, upward. But has the rocket hit its target? Oh man, looks like I've unearthed an alien species. Next time, I'll stick to my own kind. <laughs> that balloon only needed enough power to reach a window. But imagine how much power the space shuttle uses. In the first two minutes after liftoff, it climbs to 45 kilometers above the Earth at a speed of 5,000 kilometers an hour. In those first two minutes, it burns so much fuel it weighs half of what it did before takeoff. It reaches orbit in just eight and a half minutes. Wouldn't that be the ultimate, floating around in space? Hmm, maybe there's a few more clues floating around our crime scene back here on Earth. Conditions around the crime scene were perfect for gathering another kind of clue. Footprints. Our thief obviously hasn't learnt to watch their step. And that was his, or her, second mistake. Footprints are important clues for police, and in more ways than you might realise. This machine actually measures the way a person walks and helps police match a barefoot to a shoe. Shoes are different sizes with different soles. It should be possible to make a match. Let me see. Hmm, there doesn't seem to be a match. Maybe the thief changed shoes. My search for clues goes on. Black James with this one. Think quick. Wow, he's fast. But I wonder if I'm faster. I think I know a way to find out for sure without getting wet. I'll turn this ruler into a measuring stick. That way there'll be no argument. I'll wrap it in paper and colour it in. At the bottom of the stick, red shows a fast reaction time, yellow for medium and green for slow. Now to put him to the test. The quicker his reaction, the quicker he'll catch it. Now for the moment of truth. Got it. Red, right at the bottom, that's the fastest. Now it's my turn. Green? That's slow. He's won. She won't speed test me again in a hurry. Right, here's a 
trick anyone can do with a normal handkerchief. Just hold it tight. As you'd expect, when I pour water on it, it goes straight through. No trick there. But if I take the other dry handkerchief, which is exactly the same, fit it like so. And pour. It doesn't leak. It's caused by surface tension. Water molecules like to stick together and on the surface they bind to form a skin. When the glass is tipped slowly, the skin, or surface tension, remains intact. But, one false move and... and the skin will break. So far our cookie thief has managed to stay one step ahead of the detective. But she's following those clues and he must be at the end of the trail somewhere. I've got one last idea how to find the thief. If I dust the jar with talcum powder, there it is, a fingerprint. Our thief forgot one vital part of the disguise, gloves, and left behind a distinctive mark. That was the third and biggest mistake. Prints are formed by grease on our fingers. Police can find traces on paper years after the person touched it. No two people have the same fingerprint. Not even twins. So time is running out for our thief. Now, I'll just take a moment. There's no match. I don't understand. Over here. My little brother, I should have known. Let's check the evidence. The hair colour, the fingerprint, the markings on the shoe. Caught red-handed. It looks like forensics has led us to the cookie thief after all. This is going to be great. Boating over to the island for a camp out. I hope we've got everything. Got the sleeping bags, got the tent, Got the food. But we won't be wanting any boy to spoil our fun. See ya. Now, to set this camp up, spread out the tent, put up the poles. Now all we need is... The tent pegs! We must have left them in the boat. Oh, great. Another trip out to the island. What's she playing at? <laughs> what on earth is he up to? Let me look. If the real boat is out of action, why not make another one? Here's the tent pegs. Let's see if the boat can carry them. It cannot be serious. Perfect, it floats. Now, all I have to do is get it over to the island. Oh, brother. Boats come in more shapes and sizes than you can imagine. Aircraft carriers can be more than 300 metres long and weigh nearly 100,000 tonnes. And others, like this bat boat, hardly weigh anything and don't seem to spend too much time in the water at all. John's got a long way to go before he builds something like that. But we'll keep an eye on it. Actually, you better make that two eyes. Concentrate, concentrate, oh, okay, try again. What on earth is she up to? She's been at it for hours. Got it at last. What's got you so excited? I just touched that spot using only one eye. You 
great try if you think it's so easy. All you have to do is cover one eye and touch the dot on the paper. I think you're in for a surprise. Not so easy, is it? Our eyes work in pairs. The distance between them means that each eye gets a slightly different perspective on the same object. Our brain combines them to get an image with depth. We can tell how near an object is to us. With just one eye, the brain only has half the information. It struggles to work out the distance. So something that looks easy is actually really hard. Ever wanted to see sound? I'll show you. But it'll drive adults crazy. Take a round tin and cover it with plastic. Use a rubber band to make sure it's tight. Then sprinkle some brown sugar on top. Now the fun part. When I hit the tray, it vibrates. And that starts the air vibrating too. That forms sound waves, which scatter everywhere, making the sugar dance. The closer I No wonder Mum hates that trick. I think she made her point loud and clear. Oh, I hear that and I also hear John's working on a grand plan to get those tent pegs across to the island. I wish she'd hurry up. Well, this is starting to look a bit more like a boat, but I'm going to need an engine to get it across there. What's he up to now? I hate it when people litter. Probably the guy on the jet ski. A water jet. There's an idea. Maybe I can make a water jet with this rubbish. If I put a hole in the side of the cup, stick in the straw, and seal it up with plasticine and another one through the back of the boat and slide the straw through and seal that up too. There, it's done. The water should push out the back. It's working! Now for a test run. Hey, not bad, it's going! But she's pretty slow. And I think the tank's a bit small. I reckon I can make an even better one. We're never going to get the tent up. <laughs> Handboard just doesn't work with one. Trouble is my brother's a total bookworm. Aha! Now's my chance to get him away from those books. This is a cool trick. The pages of a book are covered with tiny bumps and grooves. When pages rub together, the grooves catch on each other and are really hard to pull apart. Oi! It's called friction, and it's more powerful than you think. <laughs> So, do you want to play handball? I've got a sensational trick. I'm going to get this egg into the other cup without touching it. No hands. Here I go. One, two, two and a half, three. It's magic! Want to see it again? I even blew out the cotton at the bottom. It works because the puff of air sneaks down the side of the egg. But when it hits the bottom, the only way out is to push the egg up. 
Meet Tree K. Must be a hard life being a duck. What? All they do is drift around all day. No way, they're always fighting upstream and getting dragged back downstream. I'll prove it to you. He's gone quackers. Sticks, stopwatch, tape measure. I've got everything I need. First, a starting line. Then, our finishing position will be one metre downstream. Ready, set, go! As soon as the ball hits the water, I start the clock. And I stop it when the ball crosses the finishing line. Five seconds. The river's flowing at a metre every five seconds. That's 12 metres a minute. So if that duck stops paddling, in 10 minutes he'll have floated, let's see, 10 times 12 metres. That's 120 metres downstream. You know, it must be a tough life being a duck. Take a guess which is the longest river in the world. It's the Nile, which is 6,825 kilometres long and runs all the way from Central Africa to Egypt on the Mediterranean Sea. If you guess the Amazon in South America, you weren't far off. It's just 400 kilometres shorter. But the Amazon is a much bigger river. In fact, it carries one-fifth of all the world's fresh water. It's a good thing John doesn't have to deal with a river the size of the Amazon. But it's still a long way to cross for a little boat if the girls are going to get their tent up before dark. My water jet didn't work. I need another sort of engine. Maybe there's something I can use in the boat. There are plenty of smart ways to move across water. Hovercraft use propellers in an unusual way, blowing air out the back to push themselves. And for a more leisurely pace, river boats still chug along with paddles. I've got another idea. Looks like Captain Marvel's back in business. Gotta give him points for trying. This milk carton is nice and waterproof. I can make paddle blades out of it. Hey, nice! A rubber band between two pencils will make a fine engine. Just wind it up and up. Perfect! A paddle wheel! She's going to need a lot of winds to get across there. Looks like he's going to try again. OK, little paddle boat, good luck. Away she goes. Something's coming across. Look at it go! Just like a real paddle steamer. I hope the band has enough turns. Maybe. Maybe. It's there! You've done it, John! You legend! We've got the tent pegs. Just call me John the Boat Builder. Well done, John. Now all you have to do is fix the real boat so you can pick them up in the morning. We can't hang around till then. So, so we'll, we'll see you high and, high and dry, dry next time on Backyard Science. Oh.